we're going to begin our discussion of voting paradoxes by thinking a bit more about the Condorcet winner. Recall that the Condorcet winner is a candidate that beats every other candidate in a head-to-head -head election. And we've already seen a major problem with this notion, namely the Condorcet paradox. This is a situation in which a, a Condorcet winner may not actually exist. In this lecture, I want to look at another observation of Condorcet, which has become known as Condorcet's other paradox. Let's consider a group of 81 voters who have the following rankings over three candidates, A, B, and C. Now, according to board account, candidate B should be declared the winner. That is, B has the highest Borda score. And recall that the Borda score is calculated by assigning two points to the top ranked candidate, one point to the second ranked candidate, and zero points to the last ranked candidate. And if you do that and calculate the total score for each of the candidates, candidate B is declared the winner, Candidate A comes in second with 101 points, and candidate C gets only 33 points. Now, you may want to pause the video just to double check that my calculations are actually correct. Now, according to Condorcet, Condorcet wants us to compare each of the candidates in a head-to-head -head election. And if we do that, we see that candidate A actually is the Condorcet winner. A beats both candidate B and C in a head-to-head -head election. I won't run through the calculations. Again, it's important that you either trust me or you stop the video to double check that my, that my statement is correct, that A actually beats both B and C in a head-to-head -head election, and B beats C in a head-to-head -head election. So there is a majority ranking, a so-called Condorcet ranking. Candidate A comes in first, B comes in second, and C comes in third. So this is another example in which the Condorcet winner and the Border winner are in fact different. Now, you might say the, the reason for that, one natural suggestion is the reason for that is because of the particular scores that Borda is using. Maybe Borda should use a different scoring mechanism. So give more points to the winner and, and slightly more rather than just two points, maybe you should give five points to the winner and only one point to the candidate that comes in second and, and zero points to the candidate that comes in last. What Condorcet's other paradox is, is to point out that, in fact, no scoring rule will work. That is, no scoring rule will ever give you the ranking candidate A comes in first, candidate B comes in second, candidate C comes in third. So this is a paradox in as much as you think that the Condorcet ordering over the candidates, A above B above C, is the correct ranking. This is the right, given this data, it's the right ordering that, 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 so the, that a voting method should elicit. So why is that? Well, suppose that we assign some score S2, some integer, doesn't matter, some, some number S2, some number of points to the first ranked candidate, some number of points to the second ranked candidates, and some number of points to the last ranked candidate. Now if we do that, the score for candidate A is going to be S2 times 31 voters. So you're going to get 31 voters or you're going to give candidate A a score of S2. We have 39 voters are going to give candidate A a score of S1. And 11 voters are going to give candidate A a score of S0. And what about candidate B? Well, candidate B, we see 39 voters give candidate B a score of S2. 31 voters give candidate B a score of S1. And also 11 voters give candidate B a score of S0. Now, if we want candidate A to be ranked above candidate B, that means the score given to candidate A has to be greater than the score given to candidate B. Well, if that's the case, that means that 
this number right here, S2 times 31 plus S1 times 39 plus S0 times 11, has to be strictly greater than S2 times 39 plus S1 times 31 plus S0 times 11. Now, S0 times 11 are the same in both of those equations, so we can drop it. And so what we really need is S1, sorry, 31 times S2 plus 39 times S1 has to be greater than 39 times S2 plus 31 times S1. And if we simplify this equation a bit, a bit we see that this is going to give us 8S1 is going to be greater than 8S2. How did I get that? Well, 39 S1 minus 31 S S1 has to be greater than 39 S2 minus 31 S2. So we can divide both sides by 8, and we get that S1 has to be strictly greater than S2. So what that means is the only scoring method that will actually rank candidate A above candidate B B is if the number of points you assign to the second ranked candidates is strictly greater than the number of points you assign to the first ranked candidate. But that, of course, is ridiculous. You can't, in no sensible scoring method, can give more points to second ranked candidates than to first ranked candidates. So this is Condorcet's other paradox. It's just a simple observation that there are situations in which the Condorcet winner exists, but no scoring method will actually elect the Condorcet winner. Peter Fishburne proved a very general theorem that says for all m greater than or equal to 3, so for all number of candidates greater than or equal to 3, there is a voting situation with a Condorcet winner, so a Condorcet winners exist, but every scoring rule will have at least m minus two candidates with a greater score than the Condorcet winner. So this just shows, this is kind of a general theorem to show how bad it can get. With m candidates, there always can exist a situation in which the Condorcet winner exists, but m minus two of the candidates, almost all of the candidates, have a score which is greater than the score that the Condorcet winner actually receives. So this is our first example of what's called a voting paradox. This is Condorcet's other paradox.